we pull up to that first spot and Floyd kind of explained to me what we had there and what we were fishing was anywhere from about one to two and a half feet of water and it was an oyster bed so there's a lot of oyster bars very easy to get cut off on and I was throwing the tsunami gold spoon because I knew that I could probably suspend that about a foot off of the bottom so I made a few casts with that gold spoon and it didn't take me very long at all and I had a hit there it is yeah good hit Woo. I'm Captain Jimmy Nelson and today we're out here with Captain Floyd of Venice Inshore Fishing Charters and he's putting us on some big red fish today so get ready for some redfish action out here. And I got this one up beside the boat now. But when that fish got close to the boat, I realized that it was just a big redfish that was running at us. There he goes, he just came alive on me. He just came alive on me. And that big bull just kind of took me all the way around the boat. What I decided to throw on there, we were real shallow here. A lot of obstacles and things on the bottom. I didn't want to bounce a jig and lose it. It's a little wavy for my top water. So I put one of those tsunami spoons on, a gold spoon. So I work it over the power pole and come back towards the front of the boat and try to keep that redfish off of any other obstacles that were there. Gold spoons are tried and true. One of the oldest redfish baits out there. Look at that fish in the water, man. Oh, look at that thing. I had my drag pretty cranked and we got that fish a little bit closer to the boat. I was trying to get it within range so that Floyd could net it. And then Floyd netted that fish and pulled him in. There he is. All right. Good job, buddy. Yeah, you're right. Good job. This is what we do down here. That's a stud. That definitely wasn't the biggest redfish I've ever caught in Louisiana, but we were on the right track because we were catching some bulls. What we're catching these big bulls on, so you'll know what we're using throughout the day. We don't want it to be any surprise to you. We're not hiding what we're fishing with. What he just took out of my hands there is a 4,000 Tsunami Shield in their uh, Coastal Series Tsunami Rod. And you can see deep down in that fish's mouth right there, is a gold spoon. That's what he ate. That's a tsunami gold spoon stuck to his tongue. Doesn't taste like that pogey he was after, but it worked out good for us. Man, what a stud, man. Yeah, what you're a right. Stud. Yeah, you're right. And he told me, so we can catch slot fish all day long, all we want. I didn't want that. We wanted the big reds. A lot of people come down here and meet fish. If you want to do that, this is your man right here. He will put you on those fish. I just want to catch and release a bunch of big bulls today, and uh, this is what we're after. Way to start it off. Not, not more than five minutes out here. Already hooked up to a big stud. Got it out. There it is right there. That's that spoon. Beautiful fish. Didn't take long at all. That's the way I like to fish. Don't like to hunt for them all day. Look at that thing. Beautiful Louisiana red fish. So as I was putting that fish in the water to release him, I thought I was gonna have to revive him a little bit, but it really didn't take much reviving to get the fish to swim off. Look at that. He wouldn't even let me revive him. That was a sign of a healthy fish. Couldn't even shake him twice and he was out of there. That redfish swam off right away, so we got ready to catch another one. Floyd's sitting there chugging that popper along and chugging that popper, and then all of a sudden he got nailed. He thought it was a catfish. So he's reeling this fish in, and I was like, oh, I don't know, it's pulling kind of hard. Maybe not. And then all of a sudden, that thing really started pulling, and he realized he didn't have a catfish on it. So Floyd worked that fish close to the boat, got him within range for me to net him, and I netted the fish and pulled it right in. Floyd, I tell you what, buddy, that's the bull you were after. Yeah, you're right, my friend. <laughs> Look at that, the tsunami swim bait right there in the corner of his mouth. Wow, what a stud, buddy. So Floyd's sitting there popping that popping cork, and I'm throwing my spoon, and then all of a sudden, my spoon got nailed again. And it was a little trout, but mine shook off, and right as mine shook off, Floyd hooked up. Not a trout. It would have been nice to have a double on, but the trout flipped off and the one that mattered was still hooked up, which was the big redfish. Louisiana special right there. The colors on him, man. Whew. Yeah, he's hot. If you guys see why this is working so well, we're only about two and a half feet of water. If you notice on this redfish, his mouth is positioned on the bottom of his head. The way a redfish feeds is they feed down. So he's popping and getting his attention with that cork there, 
and the swim bait's coming across the bottom and he sees it and he's going to come down on and knead it. That's why a lot of times you see that tail sticking out of the water. It's the reason I love the topwater bite so much because these fish are not made to eat topwater so it's a big sloppy explosion when they come up. But dude, these are cookie cutter fish. It's just one after another in that 33, 34 inch range right there. Kellen's got a red fish. Easy. Easy. Oh, wow. It's a pretty tough battle. I'm gonna win. Who's he more tired, the fish or you? The fish. <laughs> Maybe not. Wow, big red. Red's almost as long as you are. I got this. Tell me that isn't. So today we're exploring a new area with an incoming tide. I'm using the gulp swimming mullet because it's one of my favorite lures to throw. So I'm just moving around, casting, and looking for fish today. There's our first red of the day for sure. Man, I wish I got that hit on camera. He took off. Dang, he's freaking out too. Now he's coming at me. He's gonna take off in a second. I'm using reverse to stay out of the spot where I hooked him at. Because obviously there's probably a lot more fish over there. Definitely an over slot fish. I love how these fish fight. Uh-oh. There we go. Jeez. Probably 24. Not a giant, but oh my god, they fight. It's a 8 ounce trout eye jig head with the gulp swimming on it. Oh, not bad, 26. A nice 26 inch red. First fish of the day. Big red just splashed around in there, chasing bait. Getting out of the kayak, because it was a tiny little creek but then it's deep over here and I keep hearing splashing so usually it's like right here you know where this grass is for the deep water that's a flounder I bet yep just about to explain that that's where fish would sit it's not a bad one either the new regulations is they have to be 16 oh he's only 14 anyways wasn't gonna keep him no matter what, got a little flounder. Let him go in the shallow water and let him pick where he wants to swim. He's going right back where he came from. One thing, there's like, you can see I'm standing here and then it's like a drop off there. So a little bit deeper water over there. And then there's also current flowing in from the tide and grass. So all those things kind of line up to turn it into a spot where a fish might be at. No way. Look at that. <laughs> the red almost swam right up to me. So one more thing before I move on, which is how I'm working the lure. 
pretty simple. I'm just throwing it out. I want it to be extremely close. Basically, I want it to sink all the way to the bottom. Then I'm just like bouncing it on bottom. Sometimes I'll just reel it straight. And sometimes I'll bounce it. You know, I'm not moving it fast because I want to make sure it stays on the bottom. And you see I'm like snagging on shells and stuff that are on bottom. But that's a good sign because it means you're getting your lure down deeper. Yeah, I got one. Oh, I got a bunch. Oh, heck oh. yeah. Get that bait well open. The Miller man's on fire. <laughs> that YouTube video really worked. Coming through. Yeah. Yeah. One more. One more throw. I tell everybody the secret to my success, and it's all about having the proper mindset. I simply say, never surrender. If there's an opportunity to continue, I say, take it. We're going to go catch a fish. Coming through. Small patrol. All right, let's go catch something. Keep running, we coming, ain't nothing stopping us now. We got nothing stopping us now. All right, so you think it right here on the corner, let it get drift down? Throw it like, see where that one rock by itself yeah. off the thing? Th try to hit it. We're fishing a new point. We got a pinfish going off the back. I've got a little bait on a, on a cork right here, trying for a little redfish, but we never surrender. You guys know that. This is difficult. Sometimes you just gotta find out where they are and you can catch them. It's like fishing out of a barrel. And a lot of times you want to let your bait get in the position where it's gonna get a really good drift. And sometimes you gotta find that little sweet spot where it's gonna just like float down in the proper area. Right now it's getting close to the rocks, but then it's getting pushed way far away from it. So it's hard to keep it in position, but I'm gonna let it drift back and see what's up. Oh, 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 fish on. There it is. Yeah. I don't know if that's a redfish though. We may have a catfish on here. I don't know, that's a big catfish if it is. This is the one! That's what I'm talking about. All right, Kyle, how are we gonna land this fish? All I gotta do is net him. Oh! Yeah. We did it! How big? I'm gonna say 25 and three quarters. You wanna keep him and cook him? Yeah, I mean, are you kidding me? That's a perfect eater. Really, perfect size? Oh, yeah. Oh, Woo! We got dinner, baby! Throwing that cast net made the big difference because we caught a pinfish, and that pinfish was what this fish ate. Never surrender! Yeah! Wow, a lot of pressure. <laughs> this is it, man. Catch, dude. Thank you. Can't wait to eat it. Little How are we going to cook it? We're going to get them on the half shell, throw them on the grill. Butter, Worcestershire, some hot sauce, slappy mama. I like that stuff. This is a different type of filet for me because I'm used to fish with hardly any scales like the mahi and stuff like that. So this fish is very scaly. We're gonna come down right by the anal cavity, past the caudal fin. Feels like it's coming out pretty good. <laughs> Look at that. That's pretty nice for a novice. Look at that. By the time I showered up and returned for dinner, the redfish was already on the grill. Man, we got it cooking a little bit. We're gonna finish melting that butter, mix it with okay. a little Tabasco, a little Worcestershire, right cover it back up. We're gonna let it go, I don't know, about 10 more minutes. 10 more minutes? Eat. All right. Now we're searing it. Oh, look at that, he just keeps juicing it up. Look at that flaky, beautiful white meat right there. I'm gonna pull it off, that looks pretty nice, man. Mm. That is so clean right there. Man, man, that was so good. <laughs> you cleaned it. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, come on. Oh, ooh, yeah, it's red. There you go. Let me close. All right, 
It's not as big as the one that I just lost, but right behind it, Jimbo got a nice red there on the jig. Let me get this line off of my hand. There we go. And these guys have to be 18 inches to keep, and they're a slot fish as well. So it's between 18 and 27 is the slot that they have to be in. This one looks like it's definitely gonna make it. Let me measure it here real quick. And on these fish, it's a uh, total length with a pinched tail. Put his nose right on the tip there. Yeah, that's a, see that? That's over 20 inches there. That's a 20 inch fish. It's a good red fish. Oh yeah, that's a nice red. That's a nice red. I'm gonna get down there and help you land that one. Got him. Jimbo with another nice red. Wow, guys, we are in the reds this morning. That bait, you're gonna need a new one. He doesn't wanna let it go. I'll show you guys something here on this redfish, too. A lot different than the trout we've been catching. You notice they have a much stronger mouth, a lot firmer, a lot harder. I'm gonna try not to get my fingers in here, but if one of you guys can get a close up there, check this out in these redfish's mouth. Look at the teeth they have there. Super sharp teeth. The inside of their mouth is really, really hard. They just crush crabs and shrimp. Looks like he has a piece of rock or something in there. I mean, these things are built to be feeding on the oyster bars. Also on a trout, they have really fine, thin scales. I mean, their skin can get ripped easy. These are hard, thick scales that are made for rubbing up against oyster bars and bouncing off of them and stuff. So these fish are built a lot different than the trout. In my opinion, they taste a little bit better too. I love redfish now. And that's two of them this morning. <laughs> All right, 10 minutes in and two redfish. That's a red. Oh. <laughs> I could tell he's stuck and stayed. That's a good fish. I knew it was a good one. Oh, he's going to the front oh, of the boat. No, 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 no. I hit that thing and he didn't budge. I knew it was a red instantly. <laughs> oh, I like it. I like it, Jimbo. Gosh, get out of there. Strong fish, man. Ooh, he's gonna be cutting it close. It's a 26 inch right there. All right. It's not the best way to pull him in, guys, but I got him in. Boom. That is a redfish. <laughs> it's about like that one that I lost earlier. It's a good fish. He's gonna be upper slot. He might even be over slot. Take a look here and figure it out. Oh, oh yeah, he's 26. 26. He's perfect. Yeah. And as I said earlier, they gotta be between 18 and 27, and right there is a tournament winning fish right there. If you were in a tournament, you want something hefty and thick like that. And he let, let about a half a pound of little uh, white baits out too when I pulled them up. Just threw all kinds of stuff up. Beautiful colors. And if you notice too on the redfish, you see how it has a little bit of a blue tint on the tail there? What they say that's from, is from eating a lot of blue crabs. And uh, in this area, there's a ton of blue crabs, so they have a big diet of that, and he was throwing up bait fish too, so they're eating on those as well. And I'm excited about that right there. I'd rather pull that in than a trout any day. <laughs> now, I'm enjoying catching all these trout, but that right there was fun. I hit that thing, and as soon as I did, it didn't budge. It just sat there, <laughs> boom, boom, pulling back the other way. Fun stuff.